find yourself. Uh, this is a motif um, just courses through life. Uh, maybe you were one of those people uh, in your younger years who, who, who caught this vision, uh, recognized this hunger in your soul because it's in all of our souls. So recognize that, you know, I don't quite know who I am. I need to, I need to go find myself. Uh, to this day, I hear of people tripping far and wide um, physically across the world or uh, metaphorically in search of themselves. We busy ourselves all day long with the pursuit of self. Uh, think about it. Look around you. Look at what you're doing in your life. Hobbies, projects, careers. We, we're, we're, we're trying to, you know, we always have a picture of something that we are in the process of or at the end of these things. Like we might see ourselves on a career ladder in a certain position and, and from where I'm sitting here, to see myself there is a type of arrival. I am. What, when I've achieved that, I am. And, and yet, uh, it's always up ahead. It's like chasing a carrot. You know, there's still things, hopes and dreams that, that you might have up ahead. And you, the, the person you want to be, the sense of having found yourself is always caught up in the image of the next arrival point. If you look over your shoulder, it's never quite uh, that you, you became who you thought you would become at this point. No, it's always up ahead. We're chasing to find ourselves. And do you know what? Honestly, I think that's okay. I think it's truthful. I think we were born hemorrhaging. I think we were born incomplete and, and in pursuit. But here's the issue. We got to pause it here. We have it to be truthful. We've got to stop and go, okay, for a minute, in this uh, angst-ridden pursuit of self, we have got to stop for a minute and ask ourselves, what is the nature of this life? What is the nature of this existence? That we find ourselves lost at the outset and in pursuit of finding ourselves up ahead. We start lost. If we, start, if we started found, whole, intact, we would not be hot in pursuit of self. We would not be trying to find anything if we weren't already lost. We're born lost. Listen, the Bible paints a picture of what life is. It tells us from the very outset that we are created. Yes, we are here. We're here. But by chapter 3 of the Bible, we're lost. And the reason is, is because we were created whole. We were created to be found, as it were, but not after a hot pursuit of discovery, but rather we were made to be complete and whole in union, not just with ourselves and with each other, but in union with God himself. It is an extraordinary, gracious, exhilarating existence that we were created to have. And according to the Bible, we can have again one day. But it is because we as people, God made us in his likeness, Genesis 1.27. He made us as God. Jesus himself in John 10.34, he quotes Psalm 82.6, says, You are all sons of God. God made humankind spiritual. He made humans godlike. He made us in his image. And in doing so... He gave us the decisions of our moral direction. He, he, he didn't make us robotic in our perfection the way we might make a model or try to. He made us with hearts and minds that have heaven and hell inside them because heaven and hell already existed. And God, God put us in perfection, but he said, look, there is a choice you can make. There's a tree of the knowledge of good and evil interesting the knowledge of good and evil and God is, is saying you don't have to have that knowledge in fact the knowledge will kill you 
It says in Ecclesiastes 118, with the increase of knowledge is the increase of sorrow. Are you happier now that you know so much? Or were you happier when you were three, four, five years old and you knew very little? I'm telling you, most of our pursuit is trying to get back to innocence, but we do it by stockpiling more and more knowledge. It says in the Bible that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that's what God used, literally or metaphorically, as the thing we were not to go after, and, and we still go after it today, all day long, trying to know more and be more, because at that choice, the devil, in the form of a serpent, came to us, came to Adam, came to Eve, came to man, came to woman, and he said, God says if you pursue knowing, all knowing, being, being the driver of your own destiny, God says you'll die, but it's not true. You'll become like Him. So we had a choice to make. Either we believe God and we, and, and we do not go and be where, where it is He said not to go and be so that we could live in purity and holiness. Or, tempted to be a God, the same way the serpent, the same way the devil went up against God because he wanted to be God and he found himself hell bound. He told us, you will be like God down this course of rebellion against God. Don't just serve him and receive from him. Be him. Be God. Be the God of your destiny. And as we turned to be our own God, life itself lost its soul. Life itself became finite. We die now. We weren't made to die. The physical body will die. And in that moment, the soul came to an end point. This, this is where the gospel of Jesus Christ is so exhilarating. When he comes back, he comes back to us in our mortality, John 10, 9, and says, I am the door. He who comes through me will be saved. God cut a door back into the universe, back into the eternal cosmos of your soul in the person of Jesus Christ. And he tests us again. The same way we were tested in the garden to not go there. Now God tests us to go there. He tests us to come in faith through the door that is Jesus Christ and so come back into eternal life and the forgiveness of all sins and darkness. Read the Gospel of John and uh, God bless you.